I'm going to go ahead and blow this spot. Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? It's time for another tutorial from Video Editing Software Guy. That's right, it's me, your boy Malik, and I'm gonna be bringing you something real explosive today. Let's get into it. Here we are in PowerDirector 13 Ultimate, and I'm about to start blowing stuff up. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down a photo of a landscape that I have. You can use the photo, you can use the video, you can use whatever you want. Now, I also have two clips in here, one of smoke, one of fire. And both of these clips are alpha channels. They look like they have black backgrounds when you look at them in your media library, but when you drag them down into the timeline, they have no background. It'll just be the smoke or it'll just be the fire. So the first clip I wanna bring down is the smoke. I'm gonna bring that down to timeline track two because I want it to be in between the background and the fire. And then I'm gonna bring down the explosion track and I'm gonna bring that down to track three so that it is on top of everything. So the next thing I wanna do is change the duration of my photo. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna click on duration. And I'm gonna change it to the duration I want. And click on okay. Now I want to change the speed of the smoke and the fire because they are both slow motion. If you do not have slow motion clips and you like the speed of your smoke and your fire, you don't have to do this step. I'm gonna click on the smoke. I'm gonna click on power tools. And I'm gonna click on video speed. Now that I have the speed the way that I want it, I want to move the clip to the position in time or on the timeline track where I want them. And I want them at about three seconds. And that's good there. So what I'm gonna do is hover over the playhead until I see the time that I want. I'm gonna right click on this and add timeline marker and it says the time that it's gonna be at, so I know that's correct. I don't need any notes on this because this is the only marker I have, and I'm gonna click on OK. So now I'm gonna drag these clips to where the timeline marker is. And now I need to position the clips where I want them. So if I put my playhead somewhere here, you'll see that the smoke is pretty much centered, but the fire isn't. So I'm going to turn off the timeline track with the fire so I can just see the smoke. And now I'm going to click on the heat cloud and I'm going to drag this down a little bit because I can see there's a little bit of green below where I want the smoke to start emanating from. And that looks a lot better there. And so now I'm going to turn back on the fire clip. I'm going to click on the fire clip. And I wanna make sure that it's centered. So I'm gonna move this over to the side some. And that looks a lot better. So now that I like the position of these clips, I'm going to move my playhead to the beginning of either one of these clips by clicking away and then clicking on the clip. And then I'm going to click on the top 
clip, which is my picture, and I'm going to split it. And I'm going to move my playhead right to the end of these clips. And I'm going to click on split again. And now with this middle section, I'm going to select it and I'm going to add a lens flare to it. Now I need to add this lens flare in order to add some light to the environment and make it look more realistic. So I'm going to click on effects. I'm going to go to special. and lens flare. So I'm going to drag the lens flare onto the picture or clip that I'm using. And once that's done, I get an effect button here. So I'm going to click on effect. And for position, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to drag this little red dot right down into the middle center of the screen where I had the smoke and the fire coming from. That looks good there. So I'm going to click on OK. And now I'm going to go to Lens Flare Type. And I'm going to choose Lens Flare Type 3 because this one looks more orangish and it'll match up with the fire better. And now I'm going to click on keyframe. Now the thing that I need to keyframe here is the brightness and the blend. So I don't want it to be bright before the smoke and the fire come onto the screen and I don't want it to still be bright after they leave the screen. So to make it correct, I need to add keyframes to control the brightness. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blend. The blend controls how much of the flare you see, like right on the tree, you see some lens flare on that. This will actually make that go away and come onto the screen along with the brightness. So I'm basically going to key this out at the positions where I want them keyed out. All right, now that I've got this key framed out with my brightness and my lens flare and everything, I'm going to click on this X to close this. Now, I have added that to the environment by adding it to the background or the picture clip. But what I want to do now is also add it to the fire. The reason why I want that to happen is because I want that to get brighter as well. So I'm going to right click on the background. I'm going to do copy keyframe attributes. Then I'm going to click on the fiery heights with the left click of my mouse. I'm going to right click on it and choose paste keyframe attributes. And I'm going to click on OK. Now, if you have an issue with this, if it moved your picture over because of the uh, moving of the keyframes or adding the keyframes, then you might have to move your picture of the fire over again to make sure that it's still in place. And since the preview is a little laggy on my uh, program right now, here's an example of what everything looks like after you're done. And that's it, people. Start blowing stuff up and have some fun. If you like what you saw, do me a favor. Hit the thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. And of course, you know me. Hit me with a comment. I'll always get back with you. And if you want some more of this video-licious love every single time I upload a video, you need to subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to Video Editing Software Guide and you will get all the power director love 
you need. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.